Margaret, June of 2020 was wiped out by the pandemic. What is the exam process forward? And critically, how do you fit thousands of people in the Javits Center in New York if they can't do that? Right. Well, Tom, you're absolutely right. June was unprecedented. First time in our history that we have ever deferred an exam. And we immediately turned our attention to logistics to be able to administer in um, in December. So we are making the preparations everywhere. We're uh, using, in many cases, smaller centers um, all around the world. Uh, obviously, we care deeply about the safety of our candidates. But wow, are our candidates ever um, prepared for this. The re-up rate has been extraordinary. And, uh, of course, you will recall the days when you and I would have prepared enormously for it, and you really want to write the exam. So uh, all eyes will be on December. We accelerated our computer-based testing, which mm -hmm. also allowed us to open up different windows for candidates um, throughout 2021. So uh, a little bit of optionality there for candidates. Very interesting. Let's talk about the greater idea of the curricula as well. Over the last six weeks, we've had a derivatives uproar. You know I've always been critical in my service to CFA Institute that there needs to be more derivatives, there needs to be more quant, yep. more Greek letters as well. Are you greeking up the CFA <laughs> curricula? We are. So uh, we do a very robust um, analysis of what the early market entrant needs um, and what employers are looking for and what employees need to meet those uh, employer desires. And so you're going to see more data science, more natural language processing, more derivative stuff. Yes. Um, I think when you and I wrote the exams, um, you know, there, it was really light on that. A, a future sweep was uh, considered a derivative um, back then. Um, one thing I will tell your listeners, though, is that the, our most popular publication is our refresher readings. So all of those new readings that come out um, based on the new curriculum and, uh, again, where the market is headed, uh, what the demand from the market is. So um, for those of you who, for whom it's been a while, I'd encourage you to look at the refresher readings on our website. They're a really terrific indication as to what's in the curriculum now. Uh, Marjorie, how does actually ESG investing and ESG calculation change, and how will that impact the CFA exams? So ESG, um, as you know, is a pretty cluttered field these days. We've put a lot of effort in the last year to try and make sense of it from an investment professional's perspective. So we have our consultation paper out right now for ESG um, disclosure standards. That's where investment managers can have standardized ways to um, disclose the nature and characteristics of their funds and investors to be able to assess that. Uh, this week, we're also launching our climate um, paper, which is for for investment mm -hmm. professionals, mm -hmm. uh, capturing the best practices for investment analysis. So um, I think it's a field where we can uh, add a lot to the uh, standards and codification, but also really to the right. practices um, for investment professionals. 